listen to this. Wait, I'm listening. Your eyes are like stars. Your lips are like cherries. Your teeth is like poils. Gee whiz, you're the berries. <laughs> he was always a hero, but when he was only on the page, Popeye the Sailor was limited by his silence. When he jumped from the comic strip pages to moving pictures, life was breathed into the formerly silent mariner by giving him voice. Thanks to these newfound pipes, he was forever changed from comic strip hero to international star. That distinctive voice, often imitated but never surpassed in popularity. Though one voice is associated with Popeye, there were actually several voice artists who at one time or another provided his vocal personality. I'm king! Oh, you? Yeah? Then I'll brown you. What? Oh. Rather me than the dumb amelo. We don't want no scorch flapping around here. Popeye's voice is as important to the character as spinach or his, his forearms, his pipe, you know, it's, it's really a part of his character. It's evident that um, in addition to, the, to the, the visual content, the Fleischer's people really had thought this through very carefully as to what was right for the characters in the format. And for the voice of Popeye, they uh, got a hold of a, a vaudevillian named Billy Costello, who was also known as Red Pepper Sam. I've got some important news to tell you. I came to tell you that you could ask me to marry you. One of the most distinctive aspects of the Fleischer cartoon, specifically rather than any other period of Popeye, is all the ad-lib mumblings that are going on. With Costello, he was doing Popeye mumblings and the singing along to his own incidental music, but he tended not to say anything funny. If you look at, uh, say, Ax Me Another, where he's mumbling comments on the action, but it's not anything funny. Costello was the voice of Popeye for the first 26 cartoons, with the exception of one. For reasons unknown, Floyd Buckley, who had done a Popeye radio voice, filled in on Be Kind to Aminos. It must have been jarring for loyal Popeye fans in 1935. Stop that. Stop that. When Costello proved too difficult to work with, the Fleischers sought a permanent replacement. Coincidentally, there was a young man in the story department whose hobby was mimicking Popeye. His name was Jack Mercer, and his fun and games soon landed him the job of a lifetime. I would imitate some of the characters, you know, and the, like, for instance, if I was working on a chicken character, I would make a chicken sound. <laughs> so finally, I started to imitate the Popeye voice, and somebody heard me and uh, suggested that I try out for it. Well, it's not under there. Well, here's another one over here, anyway. Let's go. Uh, well, what Jack Mercer did was to take those mumblings and do gags, such as the, the, the memorable, you know, Hair Today, Goon Tomorrow in Goonland. Uh, Hair Today, Goon Tomorrow. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. There we are, all set. Huh? Mercer took the mumbling principle but actually added the gag element, which Costello had failed to do. People who see these Fleischer cartoons for the first time are often rather thrown wow. by the fact that these ad lib mumblings aren't in lip sync. Hey, stupid, do you know where my pappy is head, huh? Uh, yourself. The cartoons were post-synced. What that means is they'd animate the dialogue, or sometimes they wouldn't even animate dialogue, and then, you know, Jack would come in and watch the picture and post-synchronize the dialogue to it, which is why when Popeye does his funny mumbling, you don't actually see the mouth move. <laughs> and, uh, but they're charming. You, you can't do that any other way. A flip, flip, Fuji. I take a three and a half, but an eight feels so good. Well, I better get twelves, huh? What you're hearing really is two recordings of the characters' voices. Often, Mercer would do a run-through of the films early on, and then he would go back and do another run-through, writing a lot of his own gags as he went along. Mercer's Popeye voice was a singular sensation, but a duality in nature, similar to the style used by Tuvan throat singers in the Far East. What they do there is they develop this weird way of singing. They would just go, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, that's hard to do. And, uh, and it was real low. And then some of them would get a whistle out of their voice. It was incredible. And I thought, well, wait a minute, I'm listening to this one guy. And the more they play him, I realized that he's doing a high voice and a low voice at the same time. 
And then all of a sudden, it just hit me in the head. It's, he sounds like Popeye. The high voice would be clear, and the low voice would be clear, but Jack Mercer would be, uh... Yoo-hoo, olive oil. I bring you some flowers. <laughs> and then the low voice at the same time would be, Yoo-hoo, olive oil. I bring you some flowers. <laughs> and so it would be like, um... Yoo-hoo, olive oil. I bring you some flowers. <laughs> But the talents of Jack Mercer extended beyond his voice. Being a story man, even, he understood what was going on in the stories. So it, it turned out that Jack Mercer was much more than that. He was an amazing talent. Storymen in the animation world at that time were all artists. They were cartoonists. Uh, and, and that's what he was, because he was an idea man. He later on contributed an enormous amount to the stories of the Popeye cartoons. So not only was he voicing Popeye, he was creating Popeye situations. Hey, don't you know that thing is loaded with dynamite? Yes, sir. In the 1940s, as Popeye served his country in the armed forces, Jack Mercer did the same. A substitute had to be found for Popeye. And one solution is quite surprising. Who was less likely to provide Popeye's gruff voice than May Questel, voice of the sweet-sounding Betty Boop and the high-pitched olive oil? A woman's like an appendix. She's something a man is better off without. She once told me that there was an occasion when Jack Mercer was unavailable, and she even did the voice of Popeye. I thought, well, maybe she's embellishing this story a little or making something up. And she proceeded to do it for me. I thought I caught a big sucker, too. So long, pal. On eight occasions during Mercer's tour of duty, Harry Foster Welch filled in as the Popeye voice between March 1946 and April 1947. The of the house ain't no job for a woman, especially a female. The last incarnation of Popeye was in 1987's Popeye and Son, three years after Mercer passed away. Maurice LaMarche was the artist who rounded out the wave of 20th century Popeye voices in this short-lived series. Junior well blow me down. Billy West faced the challenge of bringing Popeye's voice into the 21st century in a 2004 special. He found it wasn't easy taking over the voice Jack Mercer made famous. Mm, unless I'm a second she ain't too keen on the idea. Mm. It's wear and tear. I mean, I, I thought that I could just get used to it. Uh, you know, I've been doing this for so long, and boy, you, do, you never do get used to it. You sound like a chainsaw. And what if me pappy ain't in no trouble? And what if he doesn't want to see me? I guess it's a good thing I already talks to myself all the time. Then there was the stumbling block of having to sing in character as Popeye. I had to think about that scatting that Jack Mercer used to do. I think he was a drummer, and he brought this staccato uh, scat type singing it was really imaginative and so to find the right beats i had to just like listen to it a lot for decades popeye fans have listened closely as well and while he was not the sailor's lone voice popeye's true voice will always be that of jack mercer oh, well here i go from the day he became Popeye and King of the Mardi Gras in 1935, through the famous studio's cartoons in the 40s and 50s, the King Features episodes in the 60s, and the Hanna-Barbera series in the 70s and 80s, Mercer's voice, ad-libs and quips were the heart and soul of Popeye. I can't read an Elsie Seeger comic strip without thinking of Popeye's Jack Mercer voice in my head. I just can't. Popeye, you're just in time to take Fluffy for a walk. I think I came a little too early, if you ask me. A he-man like I am can't take a sissy dog like that for a walk. Bill Costello, Jack Mercer, they're all up there in my book. I mean, they just won't fade. They're at the top. They're at the top because they were originators. You know, they, they showed the way. Popeye the sailor man. Woo woo! <laughs>